Amen. The Gospel of St. John, chapter number 15, beginning with the fifth verse. From the New International Version of the Bible. And it simply reads, I am the vine. You are the branches. Uh -huh. If you remain in me, yes, sir. and I in you, you will bear much fruit. Apart from me, you can do nothing. If you do not remain in me, you are like a branch that is thrown away and withers. Such branches are picked up, thrown into the fire, and burned. If you remain in me, and my words remain in you, ask whatever you wish, and it will be done for you. For the word of the Lord is blessed. Amen. For a few moments, well. on today, I want to encourage you from the subject, a means to an end. In order for us to possess the land and to achieve the goals that God has for us. On today, we must understand the significance of staying connected and staying committed to Christ. Just as the branch cannot bear fruit without being connected to the vine, believers cannot experience spiritual success without intentionally seeking union with the Lord. Hello. As we begin to close out this first month of 2024, my brothers and my sisters, it is critical for us as disciples to grasp the specific desires that God has for us. Just as God has desires for you, he also has desires for me. But we both need to individually and collectively be attentive to what he wants us to accomplish as we strive to go forth to possess all that he has for us. Yes, to effectively understand what God is saying to us, Ray, we must commit ourselves to regularly communicating with God in prayer. Amen. Amen. However, it is not sufficient to simply communicate with God in prayer. But we also must prioritize reading and studying his word. Because the Bible is necessary for us accomplishing what God wants us to accomplish in 2024. And think of the Simpson, by immersing ourselves in Scripture, we gain a deeper understanding of God's desires for us. And we discern what He wants us to avoid. Furthermore, Mother Wright, our commitment must extend beyond prayer, beyond reading, and beyond studying alone. Because we must be intentional. We must be intentional about our 
worship. And we must be intentional about our fellowship with God and our fellowship with one another. In between our times of worship and our times of fellowship, Sister Sherry, we need to take moments of what I call quiet reflection to recognize God's presence and his goodness in our lives. This practice, my brothers and my sisters, will lead us to a deeper understanding of our God and contribute to a more intimate relationship with the master. Lastly, our commitment should manifest itself, Todd, in the way we love and treat one another. It is through our demonstration of faith that we express our love and our appreciation to those around us. And this demonstrates, my brothers and my sisters, our commitment to our relationship with God. And we must understand that no matter what we do, and no matter what we say, God should always take the lead. The songwriter says, I will follow where you lead. Your hand, I will trust completely. I will follow where you lead. On the mountaintop or in the stormy sea, I will follow where you lead. Through dangers I can see and those unseen. I will follow where you lead and where you lead, God. I will Go. See, today and every day, we must recognize that it is our divine commission to go and make disciples and to go and achieve everything. Yes, everything you want. That God has preordained for us to do in this year. To do so, check this out. Dr. Carter, we need to give God our undivided attention and our greatest effort. Reverend Slade, I can take my seat on that note. (laughs) As we pursue our goals to achieve the greater, and let me ask you, is your goal to achieve the greater in 2024? If that is our goal, We must have focus. And we must be determined to live for Christ no matter what comes our way. Uh We might ask ourselves, how can we find the motivation and the mindset to pursue the greater that God has for us in the midst of our struggles and in the midst of our heartache. As seasoned believers, we understand that achieving anything worth having goes beyond church attendance. Achieving the greater goes beyond Participating in church related right. activities. Right. Model. Model. Achieving the greater goes beyond collecting titles. However, if we want to achieve the greater, it requires a deep deeper connection to Christ and committed dedication to the cause of Christ. And this is intentionally nurtured 
by us, by the aid of the Holy Spirit. And understand, by staying connected and staying committed to Christ, we are propelled into a mindset of serving God in excellence, ultimately leading us to the achievements that God has planned for us. In essence, what I'm trying to say on today is there is a specific approach to reaching our goals in life. As believers, our motivation should always be rooted and grounded in Christ. Regardless of the challenges that we face. And let me throw this in parenthetically. We will face challenges. But we should be rooted and grounded in Christ. No matter what is thought about us or said about us. We should be rooted and grounded in Christ. Regardless of the obstacles and the hindrances. In hindrances in our way. We must be rooted and grounded in Christ. See, Jelani, let me tell you something. I have decided I won't turn back and I won't give up. I've come too far to turn back now in the midst of the struggles. For Christ I will live and for Christ I will die. I've come too far to turn back now. If I find myself in the lion's den or in the fiery furnace, I've come too far to turn back now. The title of this gospel clearly indicates it was written by somebody. Leon by the name John. Additional evidence claims that this John is the son of Brother Zebedee. This John yes, sir. is one of the twelve disciples. And this John is also referred to as the disciple that Jesus loved. Come over here, Deacon Grant. Furthermore, the early church father, Irenaeus, yes, supports this identification uh -huh. that this book was written by John, uh -huh. the, apostle the apostle of Jesus the Christ. Yes, John's audience consisted of both Jews and Gentiles, uh -huh. residing in the larger Greco-Roman world, specifically in Ephesus and its surroundings during the latter part of the first century AD. Come on, teach. The primary theme of John is centered on proclaiming that Jesus of Nazareth yes, sir. is the long-awaited Messiah and the Son of God. Yes, amen, amen. This conveys to the reader. So this lets the reader know that through faith in Jesus, individuals can attain eternal life. Yes, sir. In our text, the key focus when it comes to possessing the land is to align ourselves with God's requirements if we wish to experience abundant success in our next level of service. Uh -huh. However, with that being the focus, we must understand that the method we use as a means to achieve our focus within the local body is by having an organic or natural authentic intimate relationship with Jesus. Uh -huh. Tell your neighbor you gotta get it for yourself. And the text 
emphasizes the importance that we are, be, are, we are to be connected to Christ no matter what. No matter what. So when confusion yeah. and doubt begin to creep in, uh -huh. tell yourself, I am to be connected to Christ. I am to be connected to Christ. No matter what. No matter what. When others will trouble comes our way. Uh -huh. And it will come our way. We are to be connected to Christ. No matter what. No matter what. If we feel ambushed by the adversaries of life, when loneliness becomes our daily norm, when work gets hard and we feel like we have no help, when the health issues become more and more common, we are still to be connected to Christ. Yeah. No matter what. what. We see that. When Jesus says, I am the vine. Yes, sir. And you are the branches. We understand that when we are joined with him, the harvest, my brothers and my sisters, is sure to be abundant. But we understand this is not always easy. And I think we understand that. But the promise is when we stay connected. To Jesus, yeah. he can do exceedingly yes, and abundantly yes. above all that we can ask or think. This lets us know that if we are joined with Christ and as we go forth to possess the land, we are going to be victorious as we move forward. We are going to be victorious even in the midst of haters. Yes. Even in the midst of naysayers. And even in the midst of opposition. However, in the midst of the service, our allegiance must always be to Jesus. But when it gets away from Jesus, and it turns to ourselves. And sometimes we have allegiance to ourselves. Sometimes our allegiance is to the church minus Jesus. And sometimes our allegiance are to other people. But when our allegiance is to anything other than Jesus, nothing will come forth that is ever The songwriter says, when everything else fails, yeah. I can go to the rock. Yeah. When trouble Preach. is all around me, yeah. I can go to the rock. Yeah. See, God promised that he would keep me if I abide in his holy word. No matter what the problem is, no matter what they say about me, no matter what the situation may be, I can go to the rock. But Jesus states, anyone who decides to separate from him, Deacon Simpson, he or she is like dead wood. See, I... Let me talk to you for a minute. Deacon Simpson had a couple of trees in his yard. And he said, Pastor, I'm going to bring you the wood. Now, every piece of wood that Deacon Simpson brings me is separated from the vine. It's dead wood. That means when he bundles it up, nothing fruitful can come from it because it's dead. It's, di it's disconnected from the source. So dead wood, my brothers and my sisters, is defined as a branch or part of a tree that is no longer living. In this instance, 
That wood signifies people. Okay. Disconnected from the true vine. And because they are disconnected, thinking citizen, nothing productive can come from them because they're disconnected from the source of power. And so, when Deacon Simpson brings me the wood, it's to throw it to my smoker. Because the only thing that it's good for is to go into the fire. However, I want to encourage you on today not to be dead wood. Don't come to church and still be dead wood. Don't have a title and still be dead wood. Don't be singing praises and still be dead wood. Don't be preaching sermons and still be dead wood. But I challenge you to stay connected and stay committed. Being successful. I want you to hear me closely, HMBC. Mm -hmm. Being successful yes. does not mean that the church will be overflowing with folks. No, that's, right. that's right. Let me say that again. <laughs> Being successful doesn't mean that the church will be filled. Being successful doesn't mean there'll be thousands of viewers on Facebook. Uh huh. Well, my trustee is that. Being successful don't mean the bank account is going to be overflowing. However, being successful means as a church, no matter how many of us it is, what we say and what we do benefits the building of God's kingdom and the heartbeat of Hope Missionary Baptist Church is not the people, but the heartbeat is Jesus Christ. With all that said, what actions or methods can lead us to success in attaining all that God has for us while maintaining our spiritual productivity? Uh -huh. Number one, we must recognize that when Jesus says, I am the vine, he is revealing himself as the source. Yes. He is the source of spiritual life, mm -hmm. vitality, growth, and productivity. Yes. Jesus is the source. Mm -hmm. Number two, to bear good fruit. In this new season of abundance, we must stay connected to the source. Yes, right, yes, yes. And remain devoted to the source, cultivating an unbroken communion with the source. Amen. Point number three. By choosing to be committed and connected to the source, we become the channel through which God's covenant blessings flow out to the world. Amen. So number one, we recognize that Jesus is the source. Number two, stay connected and committed to the source. And number three, by staying connected and committed to the source, 
we become a channel for an overflow. So when we are striving for the greater in God, in the midst of the chaos, stay committed and connected and be a channel for the overflow. There will be times when the folks may give a misleading account about you. Stay prayed up. Stay in the word and be filled with the Holy Ghost. Be a channel for the overflow. Friends may forsake you, then try to stain your reputation. Stay focused. Keep pressing and be a channel for the overflow. There may be moments of despair and you feel like giving up. Lean on your brother. Lean on your sister and be a channel for the overflow. See the songwriter said, when we walk with the Lord in the light of his word, for the glory he sheds on our way while we do his good will. He abides with us still and with all who would trust and obey through our committedness and our connectedness we go to trust him and to obey him as we bear the challenges and the sorrows of life we grow to trust him and obey him as we endure problems and the pains of life when we get agitated by doing our best to be dedicated when we persist through obstacles when we push past the adversaries when we confront our struggles when we face difficult times we grow to trust him and we obey him my brothers and our sisters sisters, our God is bigger than any mountain our God is faithful to perform his word. Our God is bigger than our valley. Our God is faithful to perform his word. God is bigger than our problems. God is bigger than our circumstances. God is faithful to perform his word. God is bigger than our issues. He's bigger than our pain. God is faithful. Somebody say faithful to perform his word. Let me tell you about him for a couple of minutes. He's a burden bearer. He's a heavy load lifter. He's the one true manufacturer of our redemption. He's the provider of grace, a supplier of unlimited mercy. He's the way out of no way. He's the truth. He's the light. He's the light in the land of the shadow of death. He's the content that makes the gospel necessary. He's the content that makes the gospel complete. He's a comforter in our times of despair. He's a healer when you're broken. He's the redeemer and he forgives sin. He's the good shepherd. The sheep know his voice. He's a fortress and a refuge in our time of trouble. He's a provider of strength and he fuels our endurance. Mother, he's a counselor. He's a restorer. 
He's a conqueror. A sustainer. A maintainer. Am I describing him on today? He's a fountain of grace and a fountain of living water. He can stand still and he can never stop. He's stable and he's secure. He's an anchor, a deliverer. He's a physician. He's a provider. He's our source of peace. The Bible says he's a good teacher. He's a friend to the friendless. He's hope to the hopeless. He's life to the lifeless. He's joy to the joyless. He's our one true redeemer. He is our means to an end. In times of sorrow, he's our means to an end. When the outlook seems bleak, he's our means to an end. In an uncertain future, he's our means to an end. When we feel blocked, when we feel hidden, he's a means to an end. When we feel isolated, disconnected, and discombobulated, he's the means to the end. My brothers, my sisters, no one ever cared for me like Jesus. There's no other friend so kind like he, no one else to take the sin and the darkness from me. Oh, how much he cares for you and he cares for me. See, when I was sick, Jesus cared for me. When I was broken, Jesus cared for me. When I was lost, Jesus cared for me. When I had struggles, Jesus cared for me. When I was lonely, Jesus cared for me. In hours of despair, when I was rejected and overwhelmed, Jesus cared for little old me. When I was betrayed, Jesus cared. When I questioned my purpose, Jesus cared. That was later, I can't help myself. What a friend we had to see. All our sins and griefs to bear. So Everything to God in prayer. So number one, we recognize that Jesus is the source. Number two, stay connected and committed to the source. And number three, by staying connected yes. and committed, yes, sir. we become a channel yes. for the overflow. Yes. Tell your neighbor overflow. overflow. Tell your other neighbor overflow. overflow. Hymn number 122 states, blessed quietness, yes. holy quietness, what assurance in my soul. On the stormy sea, Jesus speaks peace to me. How the billows cease to roll. My brothers and my sisters, as we go to possess the land, he is the means to the end. The doors of the church are open.